Elon Musk just posted that it is a major breakthrough and he's talking about 4680 cells that are made with the dry manufacturing process. The battery expert from the limiting factor agrees the dry electro process is a breakthrough, which is a term I rarely used. Recently, James got excited about FSD, but he says here that he's basically more excited about the dry manufacturing process and 4680 batteries then FSD? This is a big surprise because FSD is making so much progress. But the real test will be, he says, can it scale at high volume? If the answer is yes, Tesla will probably become the number one battery manufacturer outside of China. Isn't this the biggest prediction that James has made recently? And we have seen some battery manufacturers work on this method as well, but they haven't made that that much progress yet. It's fundamentally more efficient at a first principles level, which is why everyone eventually, I believe, will switch to this process. Now, he expects more issues to arise and the RAM may not go smoothly, which is almost guaranteed. But I expect Tesla has solved the major technical challenges and will continue to solve challenges that arise. And here's the full post from Sawyer to which Elon replied. This explains all of the benefits of this manufacturing process. Of course, the costs are less. It requires a lot less space in the factory, which could result in a 10x smaller factory foot print reduction and a 10x energy reduction, which is one reason why it's cheaper to make this. It could potentially result in higher density batteries and potentially more range, but that remains to be seen. We know that LG Solution is trying to commercialize the dry method by 2028, but Tesla has already made more progress than they have. There's definitely quite a bit of pushback against the prediction that James made. 4680 is unlikely to be more than a small part of Tesla's overall cell supply mix anytime soon. Maybe it can help bring down the cost on some of their higher range vehicles but the backbone of their product lineup is going to be LFP. Even going back to battery day, Tesla never said it would be the majority of their cell supply mix. It's hard to imagine Tesla suddenly becoming bigger than CATL on the cell side. That would certainly be something though. I personally think it's a huge huge deal if Tesla can cut the cost by 30%. Then Tesla will use a lot of these batteries. The problem right now is we don't know the exact savings but because Elon Musk is saying it is a major breakthrough maybe the savings are really quite significant there's one more massive benefit to producing 4680 cells in the u.s they will benefit further from the 45 dollar per kilowatt hour ira battery manufacturing credit which is three thousand seven hundred dollars on a model y with an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack and it goes directly to tesla's bottom line it's all profit so there's really a huge incentive for tesla to figure this out so i definitely disagree with omar that 4680 is unlikely to be more than a small part of Tesla's overall cell supply mix. He may be right. However, I think there is a good chance that Tesla may actually scale these batteries in a significant way. From what I'm getting from this, Omar maybe gives it a five or 10% chance that uh, it could be a big deal. I would give it more than that, maybe closer to 50%. And quarter over quarter, Tesla just was able to increase 4680 cell production by 50% compared to Q1. So it doesn't take all that many quarters to increase production by 50% each quarter. Of course, these cells have not used the full dry manufacturing process yet, only partially. And this is directly from what Tesla said. This is not speculation. This dry manufacturing process will be significantly below available our alternatives, which was the original goal of the 4680 program. This is based on the data that Tesla already has. And that's why Elon Musk says it is a major breakthrough. They didn't say below available alternatives. They didn't say slightly below. They didn't say equal to alternatives. They said significantly below. To me personally, significantly means at least 20%. So to me, it's definitely a big deal if this comes to fruition and scales. We also just learned about the mega pack progress in China. The basic foundation skeleton construction is almost done. So almost no doubt this factory will be shipping batteries in Q1 of next year. China is incredibly impressive and fast. I wouldn't go as far as Alex here, but he does have a point. Mega packs are a profit driver that is much more important than the production of vehicles, despite the current larger revenue share and its fast capacity expansion is completely completely overlooked and even ignored. I wouldn't say it's much more important, but I will agree with this point specifically here. As usual, Wall Street won't understand until it's too late, but retail investors have a 
once in a lifetime opportunity. The thing that excites me is that Elon said that this factory could potentially not just double Tesla's mega pack production, but triple it maybe. The mega pack factory too has gone vertical now. When do you think the third one is coming? And for a business like the mega pack business, which is so reliant on battery costs, if Tesla is able to produce its own batteries, that business is going to be even stronger and more important in the future. I like this. Tesla has updated its online configurator by adding a video of FSD and how the various features work. It's pretty smart how Tesla has made this. You can click on any one of these that you're interested in. Let's say you're not sure how FSD would work in detours, construction zones, curvy roads or merges or forks. And it shows you right here. Pretty good. I think they can even do better by including like a long, long drive, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour even. Definitely show someone on a road trip, on a five hour road trip as well. That's where I find it the most useful, really. Tesla just started rolling out this new FSD version. It's a point point release, so I don't expect any major improvements here. I do expect a few more point releases in the next few weeks. Omar says that this version does seem better than the previous version for the most part. It's faster and more fluid. So even though it's a point point release, is better. There's a really annoying bug though where it doesn't want to start driving. It also drove on the wrong side of the road in a parking lot, which is a regression from the previous build. Other than that, all zero interventions. During the interview with Lex Friedman, Elon Musk seems to have slipped up and inadvertently provided the first 2024 revenue guidance, says AJ. Elon said on the podcast that Tesla will do over a hundred billion in revenue this year. We know that so far, Tesla has done $46.8 billion in the first six months in revenue. So the rest of the year would have to come in at least at $53.2 billion. Given how confidently Elon spoke and knowing that the podcast was just recorded, likely meaning the first month of Q3 July has been quite good so far, this is promising. Elon stated also that he sees daily Tesla's global order flow. Hence, AJ believes it's reasonable to assume that Elon has a number in mind that is not just one dollar above 100 billion but it's more reasonable to assume it's a meaningful amount above if you assume it's 103 billion this would mean elon expects 56.2 billion for the second half of the year which would imply 28.1 billion on average for the next two quarters and these would be big increases versus 2023 q3 and q4 or maybe not necessarily big but significant also let's not forget that the last quarter was tesla's all-time high revenue quarter there's a report that warren buffett's berkshire hathaway sold nearly half of its stake in Apple. Maybe Warren Buffett will buy Tesla one day before he passes away, although I think that's unlikely. But when he exits a big position, definitely it's more likely to happen. Dila Musk says incentives for EVs exist in many states, but seem to be seldom used, maybe due to lack of awareness. He's signaling that maybe Tesla is going to start to seriously advertise, perhaps. Because usually when Elon Musk states that there is a problem, he has a solution to it. And what's the solution to increased awareness? One solution is running ads. Although posting on X also definitely helps. This already got 5.6 million views. Although he suggested that another reason for people not using these EV incentives could be excessive paperwork and requirements. Washington State just launched this new EV rebate program and over there you can get a Model 3 with zero down for $127 a month or a Model Y for $207 a month. That's because you can get a $9,000 rebate if you get a three-year lease. However, if you have a family of four you have to earn less than $93,600 so there are some strict income requirements for these incentives however the $7,500 tax credit federally is pretty easy to get for most people and 40% of Americans said they have never heard of this EV tax credit as of October 30th last year so I'm pretty sure that that number still remains pretty high actually and only 22% of the people surveyed consider themselves well informed about the credit. What's a bit strange is that women are substantially less aware of the credit than men. James is poking fun at Elon. He still doesn't get it, James says. Maybe lack of awareness. But it all starts with maybe and then you make a decision okay let's do this. So this potentially could be the beginning of Elon seriously deciding to focus a lot on advertising. And we have some significant news here. For Zad, call it gigantic news and investors are certainly excited. Even James said, it's one of these moves where long-term implications could be profound and you don't hear it often from James 
And recently, he even started changing his tune about FSD. He's really excited about it now with the 12.5 release. Sawyer, though, was a bit less excited. He just called it interesting. But there's also some speculation with this new story saying that this is about FSD and robot taxis. A few days ago, Tesla China was able to reapply for insurance brokerage company registration. And now we just learned that Tesla China founded Tesla Insurance Brokerage and Tom Zhu became CEO and chairman of the board of directors. This has now been officially, officially confirmed and Tesla is trying to gain approval to sell insurance products in the country, basically. In the long term, sure, it could have pretty significant implications. How about the short to medium term? Is Tesla really taking it seriously? Well, we know that Tesla basically gave this new company $7 million, so that's not exactly a lot of money. We also know that BYD recently got into the industry. It took over this company, which went bankrupt earlier. We know that Chinese consumers are really sensitive to price. So anything that Tesla can do to lower the price in the long term is going to have significant implications. And if Tesla can design its car so it's easy for Tesla later to fix them, it can certainly lower insurance costs, which makes the cost of vehicle ownership lower. Starting now, Tesla is offering a loan rate of 2% in the US for new Model 3. So almost all trims, including the long range rear wheel drive, except the standard range rear wheel drive you just need to place your order before the end of august and take delivery before the quarter ends and it applies to 36 to 72 month loans someone bought his model 3 a month ago at 6.3 percent so this is quite a big deal the market probably is not really a big fan of this because it's sort of like a discount basically however the whole market yesterday was down especially tech stocks this one is down 4.45%. So I think the main reason why Tesla stock did what it did yesterday was because of the market and not because of any specific Tesla stock news. If you do get this 2% financing rate, you are basically going to be saving about $100 a month. Tesla Economics gave us an example here. So it is definitely significant. It's a bit difficult to keep track of all of the promotions that Tesla is doing right now. So here's a list of everything, just in case you are thinking of buying a vehicle. There's free supercharging, free FSD transfer, lower financing rate, free paint options, and there's a discount for members of the military. Right now seems to be a pretty good time to buy a new Tesla car. Elon Musk just made a prediction here long term it will get super nutty. It was in reply to Tesla has broken their all-time quarterly revenue record 25 times over the past 10 years years including the most recent quarter and twice last year in the short to medium term tesla historically has always gotten a bit nutty but in a different way in a way that many people look at that and choose to exit the stop because it's just too much for them and then these people find themselves crying uh well we got some news here, good news for people like me who have hardware 3 cars. Looks like we have some hardware 3 or AI 3 cars testing the latest FSD build. So, Elon Musk likely was right that maybe we will actually see it within 10 days or so on hardware 3 cars. Still remains to be seen, but I'm excited about it. Maybe this is the post some of you have been waiting for. The Tesla ADAS drivers are out turning again, but I noticed some new vehicles. Can you see a Cybertruck here? So FSD is actually coming to Cybertrucks very soon, probably. We just got the wholesale number from Tesla Gear Shanghai, which came in at 74,000. Some people were speculating that maybe because the local sales in China were so strong, we will still see similar export numbers, meaning that the wholesale number is going to be quite a bit bigger, which combines local sales and exports, but it's actually fairly normal. So while local sales in China are really good, I would expect exports to be quite a bit lower. This could perhaps suggest that Tesla is trying to increase production in Europe in Giga Berlin. However, it's still a bit early to speculate exactly what's happening because I think it's better to wait for the production numbers to come out. And you can see that production numbers sometimes can be quite different from wholesale numbers. Sometimes production can really exceed it by quite a bit or sometimes it can actually be substantially lower, which is what we saw in June. Also remember that there are going to be new tariffs for Chinese made cars that will be sold in Europe. So naturally I would expect fewer exports from China to Europe. 
We got a few more reports from European countries. This is Italy, Belgium, and then Turkey. Nothing really stands out here. Tesla Series EV jacked over alleged unsafe charger adapter. This launched in early 2023 and is marketed as a safe design to allow Tesla drivers to quickly disconnect their car from a charging station and drive away even if they are still plugged into a fast charger. So if someone is trying to hijack your vehicle or physically harm you, you can just drive away, which is a cool idea. But Tesla says there is a critical safety concern with the escape connector claiming that the adapter can reach dangerously high temperatures during charging. Specifically, Tesla's testing found that the surface temperature of the escape connector could reach up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius after just... 30 minutes of charging this is dangerous so not only is there a good chance you're gonna burn yourself well that's almost guaranteed if you're gonna touch it with your bare hands but it's definitely also a fire hazard threatening both the vehicle and the surrounding supercharger infrastructure and this would be a terrible thing for tesla i mean if this ev adapter burns down for that ev adapter company it's probably not that big of a deal but for Tesla, it is a big deal. It would be all over the headlines. No one would probably blame the connector. At first, everyone would just blame Tesla. Of course, it would also be terrible for the company that makes the connector. But how soon or ever would they find out that it was the connector that started the fire? So Tesla is accusing EV Jet of false advertising. Tesla also said that the company emphasizing the adapter's compatibility with DC fast charging and its supposed ability to work seamlessly with Tesla vehicles has damaged Tesla's brand reputation. So Tesla is trying to get this adapter banned. It's also requesting damages of no less than $75,000. Okay, that's almost nothing. Also, if you remember, there's a Chinese company that Tesla has an issue with. So recently, Tesla has been taking quite a bit of action in this regard. Tesla has also warned against this trick. Inside EVs posted, yes, you can put a wet towel on a supercharger handle to get faster charging speeds. Definitely don't do it. Here's why. Placing a wet cloth on supercharger cable handles does not increase charging rates and interferes with temperature monitors creating risk of overheating or damage. Please refrain from doing this so our systems can run correctly and true charging issues can be detected by our systems. There's some pushback against the EV eject lawsuit. Alexander Merz is asking Tesla to reconsider this lawsuit and she saw the product this weekend at the X takeover. If this overheating issue that Tesla says exists, I hope they can together sort it out. Superchargers are a safety risk. The drivers are trapped and cannot move until they get out of the car and unplug the cable. Elon actually responded to her saying, we'll investigate. And the CEO of EV eject also said this. Tesla's tests were performed without active or passive cooling systems in place. Furthermore, they pushed an unrealistic charging profile through the system in a shortest circuit without charging a battery. The CEO of the company is eager to collaborate and co-develop an approved and potentially integrated solution. Seems like a peaceful resolution is quite likely here. Remember the Sawa truck that was converted basically to a medical emergency vehicle? Yeah, there's this publication which wrote Tesla Sabotrack Ambulance lets you die of embarrassment instead of your injuries. Wow, I I I have no words for this. They literally went from a legit automotive news publication to a rag now. Elon Musk signals that Tesla is going to 5x its production. One day Tesla will make a drivetrain per second currently. Every five seconds, Tesla welcomes a new drive unit into the world. If we just oversimplify everything and we assume that Tesla currently produces about 2 million of these, that means Tesla will one day get to 10 million based on this prediction from Elon Musk. I think eventually Tesla will actually deliver more than 10 million vehicles per year. Anyway, I really like seeing these posts from Tesla because Elon Musk reposts so many of them. Now this one got 36 million views. It's free advertising. And to those people that say, well, when Elon Musk posts on X, he only reaches people that already have Teslas. But how many customers does Tesla have? Does it already have tens of millions of customers that own Tesla vehicles? No, it does not. This is actually relevant to Tesla because it could increase Elon's reputation and therefore lift up Tesla's reputation as well. For weeks and weeks, I was 100% confident astronauts were coming back on Starliner. About 10 days ago, I was 80-20 they were. 
Now I am less than that NASA needs to be more transparent. They are likely just trying to avoid the embarrassment for Boeing. If SpaceX has to send a Dragon crew to bring them back, Boeing will take a huge blow to their reputation and SpaceX's reputation would be increased and Elon Musk would be considered as this great man that saves astronauts, lifting his reputation higher. They could have difficulty winning new space contracts. I mean, Boeing going forward when competing for those contracts, past performance is definitely a factor. I definitely agree with this. Astronauts' lives are not worth putting at risk to save Boeing's already dodgy reputation. These astronauts already have been out there for 57 days, then the way they're only supposed to be there for eight days. It's an unfortunate situation, but luckily we have SpaceX. Oh, and there's a report from our Technica that there is now a greater than 50% chance that the Boeing Starliner crew currently stuck on the International Space Station due to issues with Starliner will return to Earth on SpaceX's Dragon capsule. And not surprisingly, the US Space Force has increased the value of its launch contracts with SpaceX. And now back to Tesla, but one day, I think I am likely going to become a SpaceX or Starlink investor when Starlink inevitably goes public. United States trade office delays special tariff decision on Chinese EVs. They say they received more than 1100 comments and need more time to review them before issuing their decision. This is about increasing the tariffs from 25% to 100%. There are also tariffs applied to batteries and battery parts and critical minerals and superconductors and Tesla we know used to get a lot of batteries from China so this is relevant to Tesla. However this decision to delay is not uncommon so it's not like we should expect anything different really from them they did not specify when the final decision would be made though other than it would be sometime this month but no specific date canada is also trying to do something similar and the consultation period for the canadian tariffs has run for a month and will wrap up today actually so we will hear from them in the next few weeks oh is tesla among one of these companies nitsa issued a warning this week that there could be up to 51 million defective airbag inflators installed in cars across the u.s the airbags involved have been used by at least a dozen car manufacturers including gm stellanis volkswagen and hyundai is tesla in this unfortunate situation as well well i don't see any headlines about tesla so likely no but i'm gonna double check however last year there was also a very similar thing. Fortunately, this has nothing to do with Tesla as far as I'm aware, but this is a very serious issue. The airbags could project metal at high speeds toward occupants. The vehicles that have been affected by this have been produced between 2000 and 2018, so the technology that's supposed to save your life is actually likely to... <laughs> Uh, take your life and it's not a hypothetical issue this can be very deadly well check this out autonomous driving company mobilized stock is down 23 percent to a new all-time low today after they said multiple global manufacturers have made meaningful reductions to their second half production estimates which is primarily related to china yeah that's rough in one month they're down right now 41 percent also what happened yesterday Intel stock is down 27%. It's a huge company with a market cap of $95 billion. Do we need to be concerned about some broader recession or something like that? Intel supposedly borders on existential crisis as stock could see worst fall in 50 years. Well, the very broad market is only down 2.2%. But we look at the tech companies and oof. As far as predicting recessions, looking at yield curves can be quite helpful and insightful, actually. Typically, if you give, let's say, the government money, you, let's say, get a bond, you would expect a 30-year bond to give you a higher interest rate than, let's say, a one-year bond. And here's an example of how it's supposed to be. This is from 2021 April. The longer the bond duration, the higher the return. But look at August 2000 right before a big big recession yeah it was actually inverted so if you uh, gave someone money for a long time you would have gotten a lower interest rate and here's a yield curve from may 2007 before the big recession and no matter for how long you lent your money you would have still gotten the same interest rate basically whether you gave someone money for a year or 30 years one reason why this happens is because when there is a recession, the government often cuts interest rates. And because of that, long duration bonds become much more valuable. Just to keep numbers really simple, 
if you have a bond that pays you 10% and suddenly interest rates go from 10% to 2%, these 10% yielding bonds will still yield the same dollar amount, but you can sell it for a much higher amount. So for example, we have a $100 bond here and we change the yield from 10% to 2% and suddenly you can sell the bond for $230 you just doubled your money. If you can anticipate a recession and if you assume that the Fed will actually end up cutting interest rates, your long-term bonds will go up a lot in value. Short-term bonds, eh, not really because they are short-term. An inverted yield curve can often predict a recession and right now we are inverted, but we have been inverted for quite some time now. So let's say it's always inverted, then inevitably it will predict every recession because it's always <laughs> inverted, which sort of loses its meaning. But it is true that an inverted yield curve has predicted the past seven recessions. But I'm not trying to tie the market, I'm just going to stay in Tesla. Because all fund managers are aware of inverted yield curves and yet if you look at their one-year performance, nearly 73% of active fund managers underperform. And when you look at a five-year performance horizon, 95.5% of active stock fund managers lagged their indexes. So sure, I look at this inverted yield curve and I see it, but do I take it really that seriously? Eh, it doesn't really impact my decisions. Here's why hardware 3 will continue to improve. Quantization is all you need. She seems to have pretty decent experience with AI. Soda LLMs are too large to run on laptops. Quantization is a technique used to reduce LLMs computational and memory requirements and create a smaller version of the model. It involves converting the model's parameters, typically stored as 32-bit floating point numbers, into lower precision formats such as 16-bit or even 8-bit integers. So you significantly decrease the model size and accelerate inference speed, enabling deployment on resource constrained devices. It can of course affect model performance, but with this we can definitely keep making progress even when hardware is limited. Here's the full chart for anyone who wants to pause and take a look. Razad is wondering do they have to do this with every version or is it a once and done process? Right now actually Tesla is running the full size model on hardware 3. So there is no quantization happening. In the future this technology of course could be used every time a new model is trained. Oh, earlier I reported that BYD is trying to enter the Canadian market and now we are seeing tangible proof of it. This is a BYD vehicle with manufacturer plates which has been spotted in Ontario. And I'm just looking at how bad yesterday was for the socks overall and check this out. The other thing is pretty much down. Nvidia is down too. Amazon is down 10%. This is the worst day for stocks since March 16th of 2020. When it comes to stocks, often the best days generally follow the worst days. And here's one strong reason to not try to time the market. If you have been invested in S&P 500 from January of 2003 until 2022, so about two decades, if you missed just the 30 best days, you're basically making no profit. If you miss just the 10 best trading days, you are going to experience returns that will be halved. And look at this. All of the best days were basically during recessions when fear is extremely high. So best days occur in worst of times. Well, this is good. The CEO of used car website Carvana says that Tesla Model 3 was their best seller in Q2 and that they sell more EVs than gas-powered vehicles. Top five trade-ins for popular EVs on Carvana.com. Model 3 number one, Model Y number two. Then there is a Chevy Bolt then a Model S, and then a Nissan Leaf. This seems to be pretty common. This is Ray Cybertruck, and he caught two Curious Hotel employees checking out his Cybertruck. This is a bit like advertising, isn't it? I'm going to keep this just about Tesla and the markets. One thing that spooks the markets is uncertainty, and currently, when you look at the betting odds, it actually seems to be a pretty close race. There is no certainty who is going to win, really, based on this. Looking at what stock markets like, they don't like uncertainty. And you can see that the highest returns that the US stocks produce are when there are no elections at all, and the worst returns are produced when we have midterm elections. And here are average analyzed S&P 500 returns from 1950 to 2023 based on who's in power. And you can see that when the government is divided, the returns are better 
when the government is not divided and is passing new laws basically i think this is because markets like certainty if nothing can be done then it's certain that nothing is going to be different that's it for this video make sure to like and subscribe check out that lux freeman interview with elon musk i posted a few key moments from it look at the video on my channel before this one and a big thanks goes to all of my patreon supporters by joining Patreon, you will have access to all of my exclusive videos on Patreon, as well as how much I am willing to pay for each Tesla share between 2024 and 2033. If you join the investor tier, you will also have access to my valuation model, where you will see all of my assumptions, including deliveries, the energy business, Tesla's future businesses like FSD, and of course, much more. And then if you want to easily download that and put in your own numbers, then this third tier is for you. To all of my Patreon supporters, thank you so much. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't yet as well. It's really important to like the videos because that makes it less likely that the channel will be shadow banned later like my other big uh, channel got shadow banned before from about 50% of my regular viewers. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.